I'm back. <laughs> Probably wondering what I'm going to be doing today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mega Pie case made by Retroflag, which comes in a lovely little box like this. Now, if you're wondering what this actually is, this is a case for a Raspberry Pi. And if you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, I'm about to show you one. Raspberry Pis. No, not that kind of Raspberry Pi. This type of one. A tiny little board, very customizable and adaptable to whatever you want it to do. Um, become popular recently uh, with the use of emulation, being able to emulate a plethora of different consoles, um, all through a very, very small board, as you can see. Uh, so just to give you a quick rundown, uh, there are four USB ports, there is a Ethernet port if you want to connect it up to your network. Flipping onto the other side, you'll see there is a, a headphone port, everybody loves headphone ports, uh, HDMI port, and also a micro uh, USB port, which actually uh, powers the whole thing. Uh, a load of uh, IOs that run across the top, uh, and also there is a load of heat sinks that I have now added to it. And to get any data or anything actually onto it, there is a micro USB slot, which is just there at the bottom. So your card literally just slots in. So those are that's a Raspberry Pi. This particular one is a Raspberry Pi 3 model B+, because it has Bluetooth and also Wi-Fi built into it. I know, to think of something so small to be so unique is brilliant. Anyway, with that being said, let's move on to something very cool, which is the new case that I'm going to be placing this in, and I'm sure for all of you retro fanatics out there, you're going to absolutely love this case. This is the Raspberry Pi here, um, and this is actually the bottom of the main unit. So as you can see at the bottom there are uh, two USB ports, um, which are then plugged into here, which will then plug into here, and then what we've also got is we've got some switches on the top, a reset button there, uh, the power coming in, and what can only be described as possibly the cutest little fan ever. Look at the size of that little thing. So this is uh, essentially going to help keep the whole thing cool, which Raspberry Pis don't normally get that hot, but hey, a little bit of extra cooling never hurt anyone. So uh, this little power cable will basically be plugging into this part. It has been labelled fan. You can see the left hand side is uh, the positive, which is the plus, and the negative side is on the right, which is the negative symbol and how that correlates into the fan. In case you're not an electronic engineer, uh, the red is the uh, positive and the black is the negative. So uh, that would be the red and black. So this connector would go in this way, like so. Simple as that, that's been pushed in. So this fan is now gonna be powered. So it's just a case of positioning the fan into place. So, there we go, nice and tucked in. So the next thing to do is to actually get the main board actually in. Um, so what does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. <laughs> it may take a while, so I'm gonna speed up this process just so you don't have to watch me go through all of this. We should be in business. So essentially what we have, if I hold this up to the camera, is that we've got the two USB ports plugged into the first ports that were on the board, uh, on the, sorry, on the Raspberry Pi board, I should say, which then basically duplicate into uh, the two um, ports at the front here. Now, you're probably wondering, but Dean, there was four ports. How do you get access to those? Well, keep that in mind and I will show you later. They've developed a very clever uh, and unique way, um, which I'll come on to. The I.O. Um, input data, um, which I will hold up to the camera. Let me get this in position and turn it that way. Um, so the first pins go in like so. Can't quite focus in there. So they're going like so, um, just on the first set on the left there. Um, and then it kind of just fits in um, and it sits quite snug, which is quite nice. Um, so the only two things to do are basically to screw in point one and point two to put this thing in, which I'm going to do now. So this screwdriver was actually supplied by uh, the actual kit, uh, which I think is a nice touch. Um, that way you don't have to hunt around for a screwdriver to start working on this. Da, 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 da. Yep, you've guessed it. It's a 
Mini Mega Drive. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I will now zoom in for dramatic effect. Look how beautiful that is. Um, so one thing to consider is the switches on the inside. In fact, let me take the case off and show you that again. So if you remember, you've got the uh, on and off here to power it on and off, obviously, and a reset button here. How that correlates on the board is, let me take this back apart, is you have uh, this switch here, which is the power and you also have the reset. So just make sure that whatever this has been set to, so as you can see, it's currently off correlates to this which also says that it's off and on the board it is labeled off and on there as well now one other thing that I should probably show you before I finally seal this thing up and I shall swing this around and show it up for the camera is that there is a safe switch now what this means is is that if you were to power this unit off rather than it just killing the power it will actually shut the whole device down correctly which obviously will help you reduce the amount of data being corrupted and obviously help the thing actually to shut itself down in a correct manner. I haven't actually put this software on my Raspberry Pi, but I will do it in the future. Um, but just for this demonstration, I just thought I'd make that aware that this is actually a feature on it. And just to be aware that the actual uh, button must be in the correct position before you place the case back on it. So let's go and put this back together. Oh, one other thing I should make you aware. That's a little LED, which when switched on, will actually light up here. How nice. So let's get the final screws and put this together. And there we have it. They actually formed together and put together the case. Now it is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's one of, I would dare say, one of the best Raspberry Pi cases that I've seen or owned. Um, access to the USB ports at the front, as I said. Um, this looks absolutely spot on as a replica um, of a Mega Drive Model 1. Um, and as you can see, it's it's pretty, pretty close um, in terms of all the little nuances. I mean, what would have been nice is maybe if the flap opened, I don't know. I'm nitpicking here, but this thing really is built well and it looks fantastic. I mean, there are others on the market that kind of are 3D printed, but the quality and the way this has been put together, the way the, the switches feel really nice, the reset button feels nice. Ah, I haven't showed you the best part yet. So some of you are probably going, oh Dean, hang on a minute, you didn't show me where the SD card goes. So the only last thing we need to do is put the SD card in. So what we'll do is, is this has a very cool little showpiece. Underneath this little section here is a storage area and to get access to that, we get the volume rocker, put it all the way down and it opens up. So in here, you can store all of your little SD cards, USB sticks or whatever you want to put into there and it's a very nice little storage area. I mean, you can get a considerable amount in there. Um, you could probably, well, I mean, I'm not going to say how many SD cards in there, but you could probably get more than a handful in there anyway. So you're probably wondering where the SD card slot goes, and I'm about to show you, and it's probably one of the only downfalls with this, and this is more of a public service announcement to all of you who ever go and buy this case. It is a brilliant case. Here is the one problem. You can probably see there is already a scratch mark on here where I tried to open this. Trying to open this with your hand, and I'm putting moderate pressure on there, it does not open. So, oh dear. Get a tiny screwdriver, put it in there, and with a little bit of persuasion, it should, he says, get in the right area, pop open. There we go. So as you can see, that is incredibly tight. Um, and as I said, it is spring loaded, so obviously that's under pressure and there's probably too much of a lip in there gripping this, which is a shame because it's such a lovely little party piece for it to have. Anyway, goes into that tiny little cutout we've got there and it will go um, print side up. Um, so we're just going like so, push it as far as it can go, and you're done. Now one thing to consider, as I nearly did it earlier, is just here is a load of empty space. So if you miss this and let go, it will go inside the case, which is probably another thing they should probably look at, is just filling this void to avoid SD cards from falling in here. Anyway, very, very tiny, minor issues with the overall product. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a case, it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks very much like the original. Um, you have access to everything that you would need, including the other part that I mentioned is underneath here 
is where you get access, and I'm hoping you can see this on camera, I may need some additional light, so bear with, is in here, and hopefully you can pick this up on camera, is access to the two additional USB ports and also the Ethernet port. So under this cover is where those exist. Um, just trying to get that in focus, there we go. So you can see on the right hand side there is the Ethernet port and on the left of the two USBs, which just sit under the um, cover here. So that is just a little pull off cover that completes the whole set. So yeah, I mean, as a kit, it is absolutely brilliant. And as you can see, it didn't take me too long to, uh, to actually put together. So why don't we have a go? Jump cut! As you can see, it runs absolutely brilliantly. I've got this hooked up to my tiny little screen here via HDMI. I've got a power cable going into the back, uh, a USB controller into the front, and there we go. It's off and running. The only thing I can hear is a very, very, very small amount of hum coming from the uh, from the fan. But to be honest, if you're playing a game, you're not going to hear that anyway, so it's not too much of a problem. But as you can see, this runs pretty well. So you're probably wondering what I think of it. Well, the box that it comes in is absolutely beautiful. So good job guys at Retro Flag for making this Mega Pi case. Um, one thing I should make you aware is it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, which is the one I've got. Uh, a 3B, a 2B and a B Plus. Um, so it does cover a wide range of different Raspberry Pis. Um, so yeah, I mean the box is, is lovely, but I mean it's, it's this, this wonderful thing. Um, I never thought I would get excited about a case, but um, so cute, look at it. Um, the fact that they've managed to get, I mean, it sounds really weird, but the switch on a Mega Drive makes that noise and they've managed to almost replicate that. I don't know if that was meant on purpose, I'm hoping it was. Um, as I said, the only real minor qualms or issues with this is that this port to get access to here is extremely difficult without either snapping your Think, uh, your uh, nail, which I actually did, um, and having to use something just to just to jimmy it a bit. So that would be something I would consider for the future. Um, making this maybe open, I don't know, have some, some Easter egg type thing under it. I don't know if that's even possible. Um, and I guess the only other thing is, is the access to the other ports and the um, ethernet in there is, is a bit, well, I wouldn't say difficult, but I guess it's in a bit of an awkward area. But I guess to keep the aesthetics of the whole unit, um, that's why they've done it. But besides that, that is the only real issues I've got with this. The craftsmanship, the build quality, the way it was built and put together, everything was really easy to put together. Everything just worked and fitted. Um, as I said, there were, you know, kind of um, 3D printed cases that you can buy of a variety of different consoles. But this, you can see it's been, it's been properly manufactured and this looks like it could last, well, for generations to come, right? Anyway, so that was uh, the uh, Mega Pie case, uh, which looks something like that. Um, is available on, on Amazon. Um, I will link a uh, put a link in the description if you'd like to actually take a look at one and get one yourself. One thing to remember, and this is a very good thing, always read descriptions of the products because I went and bought an additional fan for this and it didn't fit. Little did I know that it had actually come with a fan, so I had saved myself the embarrassment. It also comes with the uh, heat, uh, heat sinks that go on this as well. Um, I didn't show you that because I didn't want you to see me peeling stickers off and placing it on things. If you go back through the video, you'll see where I've placed them. But as I said, uh, there are instructions that come with it that perfectly explain everything. It is very, very, very simple. And to be honest, if you own a Raspberry Pi and want a case, I think this is the one to go for. 
Hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's kind of first kind of product review type of thing, putting things together type of video. Um, I've got some more podcasts to come. Uh, I've got some exciting guests that are going to be on podcasts, so that's really going to be great. If you'd like to know more and you want to keep in touch with me, if you go into the description of this video, there are some links to all my social medias. Um, also, make sure you go and check out the people who make this uh, case because I think it is an absolutely fantastic product. Um, I wasn't paid to do it. I have paid my own money out of my own pockets for this. I wanted something cool for my Raspberry Pi and I think I have got something that I am going to be very, very proud of for a very long time. So, Me Machine Dean is signing out. Take care.